Welcome to the Lemonade Stand Stories podcast. Tune in every Thursday as we share inspirational stories from the world's greatest creators, entrepreneurs, and go-getters about how they've turned life's lemons into lemonade. And now, here's your host of Lemonade Stand Stories, Sharon Prabaka. What is going on, guys? This is Chen Prabhakar here at the Lemonade Stand Stories podcast, and I'm here with writer, director, and editor of the most beautiful film, film, his only son, David Helling. David, how you doing, my friend? Doing all right, man. Yeah, uh, yeah the most beautiful film. I'm going to take that quote, and we're going to put it on something. No, yeah. The, uh... <laughs> Dude, it, it's so good, and it's so powerful. And, and what's interesting is I've been friends with the Angel Studios folks for several years now Mm -hmm. and um i've worked with him on different projects and different things and i got to see the that little video about you talking about your film come up a little bit and i I didn't really know much of what it was but i just knew that you had such incredible passion and and um and intensity talking about this beautiful project that you've been able to work on and then i got to see the trailer i'm like whoa this looks great and then somehow or other we connected at a film festival Mm -hmm. And then uh, uh, our mutual friend now, Brad Reese, uh, said, hey, Sharon, can you please come and host the live stream of His Only Son? I'm like, yeah. In fact, I just connected with David just, just a little <laughs> bit earlier, you know? And so, you know, we, we chatted, we talked and everything. But when I got the chance to watch the film, it was so powerful and so moving. And of course, it, everyone knows a story uh, that's, that's Christian or or. I guess multiple fates know yeah. the story of <laughs> Abraham and Isaac, you know, yeah. it's, it's very common, but your interpretation of it was just so powerful and it's so gripping. And the performances mm-hmm. were so unbelievably captivating that from the first frame, I was sucked in and I love when a film can do that. And, and it didn't let me go, you know, and I, and I want to talk to you a little bit about this, but uh, the pacing of it, it was, it was, slow and powerful and gripping and i felt kind of like when i was watching dune i remember i was, I was telling that a little earlier yeah. but i'm like that that <laughs> movie as well i'm like wow like this the pacing is the same and the, the the acting is so powerful and amazing and and you had me hooked i i was so blown away i i in fact it was funny because um i was supposed to have a call and I totally skipped the call, the business call. And I had to like tell them, I'm like, I can't. I had to tell them afterwards. I, I apologize. I was gripped in a screener. I could not, I couldn't like, stop yeah. watching. It was so beautiful. Mm-hmm. But thank you. Thank you for coming on this podcast and um, and sharing your talents with us and sharing it with the world. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah, yeah. it's uh, it's encouraging to hear you say that. Um, yeah, it's definitely the pace is intentional. The pace has been there since the script format. Even whenever I was first talking with... Uh, when writing the script and whenever I was first talking with the composer even that uh, that I wanted it to be because yes it's a biblical film but in a sense it, it it's got a, a western aesthetic you know yeah. because it is it is a journey film uh, it's a man and a son and they're two servants but it's man and a son on the road and, uh, and, and and so you get a lot of those those westerns there's a lot of silence there's a lot of just dwelling in the land um, uh, a good brother of mine uh, named Dave Sharman, he he commented whenever he saw a screening of the film um, probably a year and a half ago, he said that, or it might have been close to two years ago, he said he loved the film, that it it is done at a walking pace in a period of time when that's how life was lived, at a walking pace. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so it is meant to be meditative. It is meant to draw people in, to have them focus on um, the mind of Abraham, because I, I was even, I also told my composer and I, I discussed this with my, uh, DP as well, that I wanted it to have the, 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 the feeling, the whole film is told in, in a thousand yard stare sense. you're, you're, mm-hmm. because what was it like to be in the mind of Abraham? And you know, when you, when you going through a really hard time, when you're maybe in depression, um, or there's a, a very heaviness to you, everything else in life around you seems to go in slow motion food loses mm-hmm. its flavor you know even like as you chew you're chewing slower because yeah. the thing that's so present in your mind is 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 like it's occupying all of your faculties so the film is meant to have that in the way that it's shot in the way in the even in the frame rate of the film um the 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 pacing of the dialogue the feeling of the score 
uh, all of it is to draw you into the mind of Abraham and what it had to have been like on that three-day journey to Moriah. You know, it's interesting because I've read the story many times, but your film really helped me to experience it with Abraham, mm. right? And when I was experiencing with Abraham, I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't have any children, but if I had, but I was thinking about my nephew, actually. Mm. I was thinking about my nephew and I thought, if I had to sacrifice him, who I love, my nephew, I mean, I just love him so mm. much. And to, if, if I had to sacrifice him, it, it was just so gut-wrenching. And, and it, it's just like, no, I, I, I can't. How? Mm. You know? And so, and I I don't want to spoil anything from the, uh, people who need to go watch the film. But yes. I just remember thinking <laughs> as I was watching it, like how powerful and how like acute that pain was and how that pain was stretched Mm. for the entirety of it but yet it showed how <laughs> god like comes through right yeah yeah that's uh oh, people yeah if you haven't seen it yet um yeah just just realize that 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 is the intention of it, it is a heavy journey it's a heavy wow. passage of scripture um and we are digging in and we're showing what the lord was doing in abraham's life and we're showing what the lord is pointing to in redemptive history um i like it because in the first 10 or 12 minutes of the film there's a little chuckle line there's like a line that that that, that would cause like a little bit of chuckle mm -hmm. and it's funny to watch it with an audience because like you'll hear a little bit of a chuckle and, and then i think i'm like yep that's all you get that's all you get that's all you're gonna get for the rest of the yeah. film <laughs> i hope you enjoy that oh yeah yeah that, that that little dopamine hit yes. because <laughs> it's gone from then on out mm. um yeah, it was really, really, really moving, man. And I really loved it. And I thought it was so, so gripping and so amazing. Um, so I want to talk to you a little bit about, uh, first off, like how did you, did you always want to be a filmmaker? Or how did that journey come about? Uh, yeah, well, no. Um, well, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I played with, so when I was a little, little kid, I mean, I loved movies. Uh, I loved watching Batman with Michael mm -hmm. Keaton and, and Christopher Reeve and Superman and and Back to the Future Part Two. I like pretty much wore that VHS out watching it over and over again because I was like, can't wait till we have flying cars and yeah. and, and then uh, and and power laces and and none of that happened in 2015. Um, but uh, but but throughout my childhood, I didn't really get into video games like most kids. Yeah. You know, the, I I got into action figures and I would play with my action figures. All day from like the time I get up to the time I go to bed, like if I wasn't at school and I would play to the same storyline for probably close to a decade. And I used mm -hmm. to always think like, oh, I'd love to make a movie about this. But then as I got older, you know, I went to um, in high school, I did towards my junior, senior year, did um, video tech. And that was just kind of fun goofing off um, with my with my friends and, and, and more so I wanted to be an actor. Uh, and I did yeah. theater arts in junior high, theater arts in high school. Um, but then whenever I... I went in the Marine Corps, uh, you know, 9-11 happened when I was in, in, in high school and I wanted to be in the military before that. Um, but that pretty much cemented it. And, and whenever I was enlisted into the Marine Corps while still a senior in high school and graduated and went off to boot camp, uh, that sort of just was, that was the, I didn't really think beyond that as what I would do. I knew I definitely didn't ever want to go back to school again because I was right. done with reading. Yes. Uh, no, but <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> and so, uh, yeah. so I then what happened was is for about three years, even though I grew up in a Christian home, uh, and I asked Jesus into my heart whenever I was eight years old at church camp, uh, you know, like you do, and, and I would call myself a Christian. I would argue with my non-Christian friends like a bombastic, prideful little turd, yeah. but. Uh, but uh, but inside, I was, you know, I was really just, you know, I'd ha I could have a playground in my mind and live however I wanted to live inside my mind. Absolutely. And I could be a whitewashed tomb on the outside. And so whenever I went in the Marine Corps, I didn't go to church for like three years. And I used the excuse, of, well, I don't have a vehicle. You know, how am I going to go to church? It's like I could have found a way. But whenever I um, got sent to Iraq, I had just started going because my wife and I had just gotten married in 2007 and and. We started going to a, a church in where I was at in a Camp Pendleton in San Diego County, California, and there was a, a, a church that was recommended by a brother in um, in the, my battalion, and it was a verse by verse exegetical preaching church. So you work verse by verse through every book of the Bible, and and um, 
And I started to be really convicted about not being in the Bible for myself. And then right after that, I, I went off to the Marine Corps and I was like, well, should I bring my Bible with me now? I don't know. I mean, like, I only have so much room to pack. But by God's grace, I took my Bible with me. And whenever I was out there in one of Saddam Hussein's old missile bunkers um, in Al Anbar province, there was a lot. I, I worked a lot at night. And so there's a lot of just kind of time by yourself and just to be reflective and to start to be really convicted about, okay, I call myself a Christian, but I see all this sin in my life and I'm, I'm not in the word at all. Um, and then, so I, I started, I was like, well, where do I start reading? So I started reading actually in, uh, in first Samuel, cause I was like, well, my name's David. I'll start with the life of David. Sure. And then, so I started through that and cross referencing back and forth. Cause it's an excellent study Bible it's going into the gospels, going into the epistles, and seeing just how deep my sin ran, my total depravity, like I'm totally depraved um, before the Lord, and and seeing the goodness of God's grace in the gospel and what it really means that Christ died for my sins, that God's standard's holy. I can never meet that standard because all of sin and falls short of the glory of God. So what the Lord did, because He's so good and kind and gracious, He came and lived that perfect life for us according to His perfect standard, but then was put to death for me, for for all of us um, who have who who will who will believe and have faith in his perfect life, his sacrifice, and his resurrection, um, and so all of that came alive to me, and and all of not only the gospel came alive to me, but the people that I'm reading in scripture came alive to me. So even though I have a hard time reading, it's like I couldn't get enough of the Bible, and no longer were they letters on the page; they were faces in reality that I could see they were like faces on a screen and I could see like the nuances of their lives. And, and I thought, man, if I could show this to people, if I could show what I'm seeing when I read scripture, then people who were like me, who had no desire to be in the Bible would be drawn to the word for themselves. They could see these, 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 these accounts in scripture and be drawn to the word, be drawn to, and, and, and have their eyes open to the truth of the gospel by God's grace. Um, and so that is what sparked the interest of wanting to be a filmmaker mm. to get back to your question. That's yeah. where, that a long journey to answer your question. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, so then when I got out of the Marine Corps, my wife and I prayed and prayed, and the Lord opened up every door for me to go to San Francisco to film school and, uh, and started doing little biblical vignettes from there on out, teaching myself everything I needed to know to do biblical films on no money or just out of my pocket money uh, and do it by myself if I needed to. So that includes learning all visual, visual effects from video copilot, you know, yeah. and, 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 and... Of course, Andrew Kramer, and, yeah, right? Andrew Kramer. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, yeah, yeah shout out to him. <laughs> yeah, of course. He's uh, a good, yeah. I've met him once. He's awesome. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, and teaching myself how to sew costumes, you know, and to get everything done, making miniatures. And, and yeah, so that long journey began from that point mm -hmm. to now where we're at His Only Son. I've been working on His Only Son for five and a half years. Wow. Yeah. So let me, let me ask you this. So you felt with filmmaking, like it was always this desire to tell biblical stories. Is that correct? Absolutely. Yeah. I got into Amazing. films to do biblical films. And if someone would to, were to tell me, Hey, you know, guess what? DC wants you to, and Warner brothers wants you to do the next Superman film. I'm a huge Superman fan, yeah. but you can do this film, but you're never going to do another biblical film again. I'd be like, I'm going to have to, uh, I'm going to have to pass. Uh, because mm -hmm. it, even if I never did films again, if I if I had the choice of doing non-biblical films for the rest of my life and never doing a biblical film again, I would choose to not do films and do something to bring the Word of God to people because mm -hmm. that is my heart, to open up the Word, to give people an understanding of the Word, and to grow people's love for the Word and for the Lord. Yeah. That's what I want to do. No, it's, it's amazing, man. It's so powerful. And it's interesting, right? Like... I've I've been uh, an actor for about twenty about twenty years now. Wow! You know, but since two thousand, you were a child actor or something. I mean, I wish I was. I'm forty two, so oh, uh, okay. uh, yeah, yeah. I, I guess yeah. I'm not yeah. too far behind you. Yeah, I guess yeah. twenty years is a lot longer ago it's than it long, used yeah. to be. Yeah, I was. Uh, I just I guess I decided in '04. I'm like I'm gonna be an actor, yeah. but then it was like extras and and the small parts and the stuff, yeah. and then I started doing the bigger st things. Then I moved to LA and then did a lot of stuff there, and now I'm back. But what's interesting is um, when I, uh, I I was recently in a, a video that like it was like a music video, but it was a rendition of "Come Unto Jesus." It was a beautiful hymn, mm -hmm. and and it was done in a in a really powerful way. And I was very grateful to be a part of it. I'm kind of uh, quote unquote the antagonist of the video, mm -hmm. but I have like a redemptive moment and everything mm -hmm. like that. 
But I was just watching, it's just on YouTube, but I was watching some of the comments that people were saying about how deeply this video touched them and like brought them to Christ. Mm. And look, I've done different projects all over, but when I was able to just see those comments, even just today, just reading some of them, like a, a fire lit up in me. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like this, this is it. Like this is what, why I do what I do to help people feel that love of God for them, to help people have that transformation and for them to go on their own faith journey, however it is. So it's cool that you were able to have that voice burning so brightly within you that you're able to say, okay, I'm going to do this. God, show me the way, point me how I, how you want me to go and do it. Um, now, his only son, tell me about the writing process of this of this film because you took a passage of scripture and you turned it into like this epic masterpiece of a script. Oh man, I appreciate you saying that. Um, yeah, so that was, so before I started His Only Son, I did about a decade's worth of short biblical films. Um, awesome. And so that was kind of, I didn't know, uh, but the Lord was honing my craft and, 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 and building all these little odds and ends, like showing the costumes, doing the visual effects and things I was going to have to incorporate into His Only Son mm -hmm. that I didn't even realize I was going to have to do, that I didn't realize I'd be doing most of the costumes. But Whenever I was in film school in San Francisco, I mean, you're, you're downtown San Francisco wanting to do biblical films. That, that's, that, that's like an oxymoron. Right? That brings yeah. a lot of conversations to, to the forefront whenever, because yeah. it, it, every, the start of every semester, you know, you go around the class, why is everyone here? Want to, what do they want to do? And it's like, I want to make biblical films. What? You want to, yeah. why? And then it's like, because the gospel. And so it was great because it provides a gospel opportunity in every class. And it also was a training ground for me to see, okay, am I going to compromise or am I going to lean in? And, and even if it's uncomfortable, am I going to lean in for the sake of the gospel? But I had these conversations time and time again um, with my non-believing friends about my faith, about the gospel. And I would always see a common point of contention. And it was this narrative it was this account from history from scripture uh and and they'd point at this and be like well you worship a god that would tell a man to sacrifice his own son no thanks you can keep that to yourself and so it's like i thought well what what can i do as far as digging into the text to show people what the lord was doing here what the purpose was that it was a testing of his faith i mean it says that from the top of chapter 22 like it and the lord tested him and so so what what can I can I show from the life of Abraham? How, how do we dig into the text? Do we dig into Scripture? We show what the Lord was doing and what the Lord was pointing to, because it's clear from this side of the cross what he was pointing to. But a lot of people miss it, including many, many believers miss it. They don't know how to answer the scoffers and skeptics in their life. So I wanted to do this to give an answer to the scoffers, but also give a defense to my brothers and sisters in Christ so that they can answer the scoffers and skeptics in their own life all for, for, for the believer's edification and for the scoffer's, Lord willing, salvation, that their eyes would open and be like, wow, what I thought was this evil, child-abusing God. No, he was just, he chose this man out of paganism because we see in, in Joshua that Abraham's father, Terah, was an idol worshiper, right? Mm -hmm. And so, so he pulled this man out of paganism to set him up as a, as a nation and to give him a land. But before he did that, he was giving him a memorial stone so that all of his descendants for 2,000 years can look back on this and know whenever the Lord himself would lay down his only son, his own son on Mount Moriah, um, the same mountain 2,000 years later, that all of the descendants of Abraham could look back and be like, well, wait a minute. The Lord's had this in place from the beginning. He's mm -hmm. been planning this from the beginning. So that's why I wanted to tackle this account. Yeah. And it was, and it was just, well, it was just such a beautiful like script and like the way the characters were written and, um, and the way uh, Nicola played it, like he was just, it was, it was just so gripping. Yeah. I Nicola plays it. Abraham. Yeah. So yeah. For those yeah. listening. For yes. those that are listening. Yes. Yeah. Nicola plays Abraham and yeah. he just did such a wonderful, wonderful job. Mm. Um, and you know, Nicola had, had, was sharing with, sharing with me his own, uh, like, like God called him because like he created that IMDb account. Yeah, and... that was that was just an awesome yeah witness of I mean just a reminder of hey this is the Lord in it. Right, He's the one who's moving everything. He's the one who's doing everything. So we need to make sure to give him all the glory. But even in the casting of Abraham, that was just such a sweet testimony of yeah. the Lord showing up even in that situation. 
And it, and it always is, right? Like we're, during the production of the film, what were some of the challenges that you faced? Because I'm sure on a low budget, because I think the budget we were, we were discussing was just under a quarter of a million dollars. Yeah, right? the hard the production cost, budget. Yeah. Right? And so, so, yeah, so I mean, I've, I had to work for years for free following um, following when we finished the production. So like all the visual effects, all the editing, all the miniature making and stuff like that all had to be done for no pay. So that's what keeps the cost low. So when yeah. we say that, it's the hard cost. Obviously, if you're accounting in soft costs, it would have been a lot more expensive if everything sure. would have been paid, you know. But um, but yeah, the the challenges. Well, I mean, the budget provided a lot of challenges because when you have a smaller budget, you have smaller resources. You got a smaller crew, which we had a phenomenal crew that just showed up in every day. And there were some hot, hot, hot days, and there were some cold, cold, cold days because we were shooting way out in the desert near Death Valley, and it'd be like 107, and then you go into the tent, it's like 125 degrees in the oh tent, you know, because it's this black camel hair tent. It's just like super small, confined space. Um, and then literally like a week later, we would be up in the hills of Malibu, you know, and and you can literally see the Pacific Ocean, the fog rolls in and it's 50 degrees and, and damp, you know, and so it feels like it's freezing outside because everything's just getting soaked in fog. and and so those two contrasts, but, but, um, so with the smaller budget, you have fewer shoot days. So everything has to be crammed because we had 14 main production days for mm. this. And so we had a few, you know, pickup shots where like me and my producing partner, Roman Medjinov would go out and like, I'd run camera and he'd run boom, or I'd run camera and he'd put on Abraham's, uh, clothes and, and walk across you know, a landscape <laughs> or whatever it is Amazing. to fill in the shots. Yeah. And I mean, we did that a lot to make this, to make this film as robust um, as it can be. And, and, uh, but yeah, the challenges, uh, I mean, yeah, weather, um, uh, this honestly just, uh, spiritual opposition as well. Yes. Um, sleepless nights, just contentions coming out of nowhere, things turning upside down personally, um, on all fronts. I mean, even in, you know, and Nicola, I remember Nicola and I both, the day that we were going to shoot, which is essentially the most gospel centric scene of the film and people might've even seen it online, but on, on, on Facebook with angel, cause they have shared it. And it's actually the scene that was used to, to um, raise much of the marketing costs for the film. But it is that second campfire scene, you know, um, and they talk about the reason for sacrifice. So it's, it's pretty much lays out the full gospel. Um, but the night before the so the, we went into that shoot day super long shoot day um and we went into that both nickel and i both like i barely slept the night before just like super super dark um super just all kind of things going on and then maybe slept like 90 minutes before going into this 18 hour day and then nicola wakes up he's like man he's like he's like we need to pray together man he's like i woke up and i had like he had like five different tabloids trying to contact him from the Middle East and saying, you can't do this. It's going to ruin your career. And it was like all right there on that day. And like everything, like even in his personal, his family was like upside down. Um, and it was so clearly an attack from the enemy. Yeah. Um, and this happened to be, it wasn't only just the gospel um, scene. So it wasn't just that scene we shot on that day, by the way, it was also, there's a prayer scene from Abraham, which you know what I'm talking about. That mm -hmm. was what we set, shot on the same day. And both of those scenes are so important. And that one, that prayer scene is so powerful. Um, and, uh, and you see that all the opposition that was standing in place, um, as we were moving into this scene, as a matter of fact, even Phil the donkey, like, cause we had the animal wranglers there and they bring their, uh, their, their, uh, he's not, his name's not Phil in the movie. His name's Phil in real life. Mm. Uh, but, uh, so <laughs> fantastic. And, uh, fantastic. And so, yes. so when I say Phil the donkey, it's not, why'd you name him what Phil is, in the what movie? What is happening right now? Yes. Yeah. But, uh, but no, he had like ate some plant on the side, like of the trail when he was just kind of, and like, he started like vomiting and like my, a Roman would like my, my producing partner, he was like trying to Heimlich the, the, uh, the, the, the donkey, the donkey and the animal rank is like, Oh no, we got to take him over here. And, and, uh, no animals were warmed in the making of this film. So just so we're clear, yes. but it was a close call and yeah. it was just another opposition of like to keep it. And now yeah. I see what the Lord is doing with this scene in particular, mm -hmm. and that it is the scene that raised the, the marketing cost. It was the scene that raised, um, that that's been promoted uh, in ads, um, uh, that's getting people to go to the theaters and it's it's a scene that clearly lays out the gospel and god's grace and the purpose of sacrifice 
It's so amazing because I think about whenever you're doing anything that's like for the glory of God, I, I just feel that there's always opposition from the enemy in any yeah. capacity just to try throwing you off, to keep on like distracting you, to to put you away from whatever it is. Um, but you finally made it to the finish line. Mm. And you got to the point where, um, you know, we did this live stream and you released it in theaters. And and again, that's a huge, it's another groundbreaking record because they've never, I guess, in the history, raised crowd funds for like marketing a film yeah. in the theater, right? Yeah, yeah. Which I thought was like very interesting. And then the numbers were coming in. It's like the number three movie in box office. Yeah. Which is amazing. Yeah, it's wild. It's, right? um, I, I, I don't think, I don't think it still has sunk in to me um, just w what the Lord is doing with it. It actually, and it's interestingly enough because, yeah, this is uh, so just having passed the first weekend, that weekend um, was oddly somber to me. Um, what do you think that it, is? Well, I know why it is, uh, and it's there's two reasons. Um, and uh, because you think like everyone's like, man, congratulations. What an exciting weekend. And oh, this is. Something. And you think about it as a filmmaker, this is like the top of the mountain. Like, I mean, as far as like you're in the top of the box office, yeah, number three, but you're number three behind these huge Hollywood films, yeah. Dungeons and Dragons and John, John Wick. Wick. Right. And like, here's this little Bible film that I sewed the costumes for. And I've got like paper towel tents in the background of shots, you know. And um, but you look at um, this the whole five and a half years I've been working on this have been the five and a half hardest years of my life. Um, every year, one right after another was like, well, that was the hardest year of my life. That was the hardest and darkest, and most trying year of my life, most heartbreaking year of my life. And it was like one right after another. And I knew as I grew closer to the Lord and I had to draw into the Lord, the, the film was ministering to my heart so much hearing the truth come out of Abraham's mountain. Yes, I wrote the script, but I, I I drew it from scripture through prayer and study and 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 wise counsel from brothers and sisters. Um uh, and 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 to have it minister to my heart in ways I never could have imagined through the darkest nights of my life. This film in a way became a a best friend to me. And in some cases, like even in my only friend in, in some of the really dark spots. And it was to to then come to this point and release it um, and bring it out into the world. And then at the same time as we're doing that, I've got the cast that's here and they were all here for the premiere. And so it's like, and we haven't all been together in four years, but... I've been with them every every week. Yeah. Week after week through these hard 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 years. And so it's like, oh, these are my these are my best friends. Now, granted, it's more their characters in the film. Um and uh but I mean, I, I love my cast and, and and they are all friends. But um but to to see them come and it's just like highlight of my life. We recorded the commentary track for the special edition DVD, so we all get to watch the film together and record our take. And then we had like an like a um, an actor and director kind of roundtable discussion that's also going to be on the special edition DVD. And um, to have all of that in the premiere, it's all this high points, and then everyone leaves, uh, and then I'm not going back to spend more time with his only son anymore. It's gone. It's forever gone. Mm. Um, and so it's it's like the death of your best friend and you can't get him back. Mm. It's very weird and I didn't expect it. Yeah. Um, and so I honestly, I spent just, you know, candidly, I spent most of Saturday just <laughs> weeping off and on. You know, it comes out on Friday and like Saturday, I was just in the hotel just like, you know, crying off and on. And I didn't expect that because I was looking at that, but then also looking at because the years have been so hard. Yeah. And it's been so hard and having to push inch by inch to get the film done because it's it, films don't take this long to get done. Um, but um, but to see that the Lord is so kind and gracious, not only that I could steward this account of of his friend Abraham, but that he brought me through those hard, hard trying seasons and refining periods of time. And now I get to, by His grace, get a glimpse of the fruit of it. Mm -hmm. I don't deserve that. I don't. I don't warrant that. But the Lord's so kind in in showing me, like, hey, this is what all that was for. 
Mm-hmm. Now look. Now look at the hearts that are changing, the, the the hearts that are being impacted, not only in this country, but around the world right now. And it's just like, you know, it was just like a who am I? I mean, like, I was like crying on the couch and I took a shower and I was like crying in the shower. I'm like, it's like one of those who am I moments. You know, it's like, who am I, Lord, that I could eat? It's, it's totally undeserved. And uh, so, yeah, it's been a whirlwind of emotion, but not yeah. what you expect on the other side. Because it's a like you're like, man, I'm, a, I'm the yeah. king of the world. Like, you yeah. know, as far as like, but, but no, not at all. And that's a gracious gift from the Lord because yeah. he gives us the thorns to keep us. Because, man, if I was off to myself, I'd be one prideful son of a gun. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but, yeah, so it's, 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 it's an interesting season right now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know, it's, it's interesting. I, um, I did a movie years and years ago. Uh, with a cast and we it was like a super super short like a quick shoot as well um like i I think we shot the whole movie in like nine days or something Mm. like that and it was a really tight-knit group of people and we had like some of the most it wasn't a spiritual movie at all but Mm. we had some of the most spiritual discussions on set Mm. um and just it was so beautiful and um i learned so much as an actor on that film as well and when the movie finally wrapped i remember that same sense of like loss yeah almost this feeling of like and that was only nine days yeah you're you're much 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 longer into it mm-hmm. than i was and i remember having this feeling of like now like who am i like now who, who, who mm-hmm. am i like i had this beautiful experience with these beautiful people and now we're done and now do i just move on with my life where, where do i go what do i do i, I felt a little i felt a little aimless honestly mm-hmm. i felt a little directionless a little aimless and I had to realize that that film, like everything else in my life, is a, is a chapter that the Lord gave me. And that if I could just take that chapter in and, and appreciate it and be grateful for it, then when the time is right, the other story starts unfolding mm-hmm. for the next chapter mm-hmm. and then the next chapter. Mm-hmm. And it's a, it's a process of rebirth mm-hmm. almost because you feel like, okay, that part is over. And, and it's okay to grieve. It's okay to grieve and let mm. that part kind of come out knowing that, okay, God, like, I'm ready for the next adventure, whatever you have for me. Mm. And it's and it's really, like, that movie particularly um, was really powerful because the director of that film uh, passed away during 2020. He had cancer and he passed away. Mm. And so I had a lot of time to reflect because I, right after he passed away, I was in production for another feature. But as I got to, like, think about him and his life and um all the memories we had in that short amount of time i just remember thinking like man i am so grateful that i've had all those beautiful memories Mm. and now it's like your film is a gift to the world right and it's probably turning so many people's hearts to god and helping them realize hey their sacrifice that they're making right now for their own children for their own brothers and sister it's totally worth it Mm. and that god is doing something magical Mm. and you being his servant to bring this t- to pass, to help bring it to pass, how, what a great blessing it is that God was able to use you, you know, that you were able to be an open vessel to say, okay, here I am, use me, whatever you need yeah. me to do. Um, but yeah, I think it's okay to grieve. And and I think that's, that, that's perfect because um, in that grieving, you can also know that God is there for you as well. Mm-hmm. And And so... As the next chap, as this chapter kind of comes to a close in a sense, and as the next uh, the next chapter comes up, whatever that looks like, just know that. Do you know what that looks like for you? I do, and if you would have went and seen the film in theaters, you would know what that looks like as well. See, this is this is what I get. Uh huh. Yeah, 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 yeah. So he I watched know. it. As I a did. Screener. I did watch yeah. the screen. So, I did. I and did you're watch supposed to see it on the big screen. I'm so I've to. heard. So yeah, I've yeah, heard. Yeah. I've heard. But if for those that go and see it on the big screen, yes. uh, they'll see what um, what what I want to do next. And you know what? I'll just go ahead and have one on it. It's already out. So yeah. spoiler, spoilers are already spoilers. It's not like people are going to, people are already talking about it in the comments. Um, but my, my heart is to continue to walk chronologically through the old Testament, through scripture to build people's understanding of the context of God's redemptive plan. Yeah. Um, because we have throughout Hollywood's history, we've had 10 commandments, Jesus of Nazareth, a Samson movie over here. Yeah. Ten Commandments again. Another, it's like yeah, there's yeah, another yeah. Jesus film. And then you might get like a little, a, a David or like a, a Ruth film or yeah. something like that over here. 
but it's all and then Noah and then but what people yeah. don't understand the chronology that God was was working in to unfold that progressive revelation through the prophets through the kings to to point to Christ and i think if we can build what i want to do is build a, a one film after another to give people an understanding what the lord was doing and it'll give people a full understanding of the word um and so the next film that i want to do is uh is in in i've actually i'm contracted for angel to distribute this one as well um and so we've already you know there's there's things that are percolating already to get it started um but uh, is to go through the whole life of jacob um, and you begin with the the death of abraham and um like within the first few scenes and then you end with the death of jacob and so you you have the full life of this man who tried to do everything yeah. in his own strength and he was broken and broken and broken and broken and broken yeah. and then he ends his life humbled fully relying on the lord's grace and mercy yeah. oh man are you gonna get much into joseph with it <laughs> You well, know, because I'm going to go into I'm going to go, go to the into, death of I'm going to yeah. go into the death of to the death of Jacob, and so yeah. obviously Joseph exists during that timeline as well. But right. so people will have to see um, what uh, I mean. You, it's been told in Hollywood. There's things that are focused on in the Hollywood versions that we've seen in history, um, even with Rachel and Leah. Well, with Rachel and Leah particularly, I think it's been handled unbiblically in every rendition I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. It always focuses on this odd love story of Jacob loved Rachel so much that he was willing to work seven years for yeah. that's not it that's not the point of it at all Jacob was disc was not content with the wife that he was given mm -hmm. so he was trying in his own strength to get what he wanted mm -hmm. that's who Jacob was until he was broken by the Lord he should have been content with Leah mm -hmm. Leah is the one through whom the Messiah came from so we see who God's choice was. and just like how Rachel through Rachel came Benjamin came King Saul and King Saul was the man's choice of king, and but David was God's choice because mm -hmm. man looks at the outside, God looks at the heart, yeah. and we see that encompassed in in Leah and Rachel, mm -hmm. and and the focus on Leah's heart, man, I can't wait to do that uh, because that's never been told in in, in in film before, and 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 so and you'll and we'll we'll handle Joseph in a way that hasn't ever been handled as well either, um, mm -hmm. and uh, I can't wait to. To get that done uh, I, I think about it and i mean i give myself goosebumps um i think about it and it, it's um it's it moves me even just thinking about the scenes and the way that i want to tell it so um i can't wait to see what the lord does with that either oh man well you got such a great passion man and it's and it, you i can tell like god is working through you and doing some awesome things so i'm super excited to see mm. what the future holds um so just kind of wrapping things up his only son, which is in the theater right now, what would you like people that haven't seen it yet, but are contemplating to see it? What do you hope? What do you would you like to uh, them to hear about from you right now? Um, well, as far as their to contemplate, I, I would say go see it. I would say get your tickets at angel.com slash son. I would say if you can't afford to see it, you can go to uh, angel.com slash free tickets. Um, which is totally cool because the pay it forward model that Angel has done with the Chosen for years and has brought the Chosen to 100 million people around the world for free and counting. Um, they now for the first time, so you talk about historic as far as raising marketing dollars through the crowd. For the first time, they are doing pay it forward for theaters yeah. so that people who can't afford it this Easter season can go and see and meditate on on his only son um there's a double meaning there well if you haven't caught it uh mm -hmm. let's focus on his only son this easter season with your family even if you can't afford it and if you are moved to want to purchase tickets for others you can go to angel.com slash pay it forward um and uh and so i would say go see the film um just know that it is a meditative piece it is it is a it is a quiet, reflective film in the midst of a very loud and bombastic box office. And so you've got explosions here and there, but this is like you can come and just focus on the life of Abraham, this journey, the where that 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 and experience what had to have been going through his mind mm -hmm. as he was making his way to Mount Moriah. So 
I would say that um, watching the film, because I actually watched Dungeons and uh, Dragons, or what is, that, is that what it's called? Yeah, Dungeons mm -hmm. and Dragons. Yeah, I just saw that film. Um, I, I would say uh, this film, your film, is so intimate. Mm -hmm. And as I was watching it, I found myself reflective intimately on my own heart mm -hmm. and where my heart is at. And life is full of distractions. It's full mm -hmm. of noise and chaos. And I'm just really uh, hoping that people that get the chance to watch this film can be introspective as well and see where their own heart is and where yeah. and how the Lord is leading their own heart. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, and speaking yeah. of Dungeons and Dragons, so we actually, the audiences gave it a higher cinema score, his only son, than Dungeons and Dragons. Dungeons wow. and Dragons has, has, has an A minus cinema score. And his only son got an A cinema score. So that's pretty wild. That's amazing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's as far, and, and cinema score is just exit polls uh, yeah. for people that don't know. It's like people that have left the theater. They go the first weekend. Cinema score goes and and, and, and gives people um, like a questionnaire as they exit the theater. And and yeah. Um, so don't, yeah, don't get your expectations too high. It is a humble film. Um, it's a meditative film. But man the lord is doing some things with it um that I, it's far beyond anything i could ask or think mm, i love it man i'm so i'm so grateful you came on this podcast and guys uh please check it out this easter season it's gonna be so awesome if you do and share it with your friends and family because it is a very very powerful piece david thank you so much for being on this podcast man thank you i appreciate yeah. you let me be able to be here it's been a long time coming i know last time i was here you're like oh gotta get you on the podcast and then just we well, you know what? Way. You know what's funny? That that podcast wasn't even mine. Oh, okay. That, that wasn't my podcast. Oh, okay. That, this is my podcast. Oh. That one was uh, like well, a I'm higher glad. thing. I'm so. glad I held out. Yeah, yeah. I held out. I held <laughs> out. I saved the best for last. So good. <laughs> awesome. All right, man. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks so much for listening to the Lemonade Stand podcast, and we hope you enjoyed this episode. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast on whatever platform you use to be alerted when we release new episodes. We'd also love to hear your feedback in the reviews, and if you or someone you know has an awesome Lemonade Stand story, please reach out to us on social media and let us know. Thanks so much, and have a great day.